welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you today? Oh, I'm pretty good. Yeah? Better now. Better now? Yeah. The Manhattan? Oh, yeah. It helps. Good. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Makes everything better. He's actually giving me dirty looks because he was on the phone when I started making drinks, so I didn't give him any choices. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I was just like, you know what? I'm not waiting any longer. I'm just gonna. He's going to drink a Manhattan tonight. <laughs> Happily, by the way. Okay, good, yeah. good. I'm, I'm, I'm almost out of the bourbon-infused cherries. I bought some Luxardo to replace them. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were expensive, but they should be worth it. We'll see if they're as good as these. I hadn't got down to this one yet. So. Yeah, oh, man, these are fantastic. I actually yeah. bought these at a little... Um, uh, party supply store on Main Street. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Um, that I didn't even know was there. My sister-in-law found it because yeah. that's the kind of thing that she finds. The party store, I mean, not the cherries. Yeah. Yeah. I found the cherries. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't even know that place was there. So, uh, I, I figure I could go back and get more. But I was in the market the other day and I saw the Luxardo and I thought. Yeah, I've never had those. I was fixing to ask if you had tried them or not. So no. they're they're supposed to be the gold standard. Though, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, that's the the you know a lot of the like the professional bartenders and so forth. They and the 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 connoisseurs of cocktail cherries, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, they uh, yeah they they speak very highly of the Luxardo. So yeah, I, I'll give it a shot. They might be good. Bourbon infused is. Mm-hmm. These are tasty, though. I yeah. I, really, I do really like these. I'm excited. I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to be disappointed when I open the Luxardo. I'm going to be, man, I spent <laughs> half as much for cherries that I like way more than this. <laughs> oh, well. We'll see. Well, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, the um, the bourbon I used was the Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. Yeah. Because um, I'm kind of unimpressed with it. I think yeah. I'd rather just bought the Russell's 10. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it makes a good cocktail, but... It's, I'm, I don't enjoy, uh, I don't enjoy drinking it neat as much as I do almost any other wild turkey product. Really? Uh, it costs more than rare breed too. And I think rare breed's fantastic. So. Yeah. Well, it's a good mix in whiskey then. Yeah. Yeah. It'll have to be. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have to be till it's gone. I already, right? I already have it. Money yeah. spent. May as well make use of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and then I, I got a nice, uh, vermouth. Yeah. The, um. You know, richer vermouth in the Carpano Antica, yeah. Instead of your your standard, um, what Noily Pratt or that's the most available down here, um, sweet vermouth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or the well, I say it's the most available. I could get like Gallo and so forth, but it's not as good as Noily Pratt's. Yeah. Of what's widely available, that's the best one. Yeah, I got you. I had to go to a specialty shop to find the Carpano Antica, <laughs> but I think it was worth it too. Oh, it's good. Fun. I'm glad you approve. Yep. So, uh, having wasted three minutes now <laughs> talking about the drink, um, Jeff, you can <laughs> turn the sound back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know where you want to start. I actually, so I do, you know, we kept, we did talk a little bit about social media last time at the tail yeah. um, of the episode, but I, I think that there's a lot, I think that there's actually a lot more to say, but I don't want to spend a ton of time on it because it's just, you know, different strokes, I guess. Yeah. Personally, I hate social media. I really yeah. do. Um, those of you who have tried to contact me regularly on Facebook know that I log in once a week <laughs> to post this podcast yeah. and I'll respond to you then. And then you won't hear from me for a week until the next podcast comes up. Yeah. Um, because I don't log in. I yeah. don't. And, and I have a Twitter account that I probably haven't logged into in five, six, maybe even eight years. <laughs> Since um, Twitter became a thing. <laughs> yeah, mostly. Yeah. Cause they, uh, so I did used to enjoy my Twitter account because, um, because it's a, uh, curated feed, I was able to, um, follow some news that isn't widely reported by, uh, you know, just by picking, and it, most of it was like, um, cosmology stuff and physics stuff, like a lot yeah. of science stuff. Yeah. Um, so I could follow like uh, NASA JPL and, and things like that and, and get news that I was interested in that isn't generally reported in mainstream media. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And uh, I really enjoyed that, but it was somewhere along the way, my feed was just overtaken by stupid advertisements. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's when I quit. Yeah. Uh, Facebook's the same way. Um, yeah. and I, yeah, I mean, I don't get on there. I don't even look at my feed on Facebook. I just look at messages. Your, yeah. Messages <laughs> and like notifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I get on there and check it a little bit, but it's gotten very frustrating. And, and since I still get on there, but I don't get on there near as frequently as I did before the ads kind of like took over. Yeah. Um, the podcast actually has an Instagram account. Uh, you're welcome to follow. I think we've never posted a single thing. I, I haven't posted anything on there. <laughs> um, but but the podcast has had an Instagram account for, I don't know, four years or something. Yeah, no. I mean, we uh, truthfully, like if we were, we should have made some use of it. Like um, we should have, you know, posted pictures with Scott Horton or, yeah. or Jacob Hornberger or yeah. You know, and stuff Tom from the, Woods or, and stuff from you know, the conventions yeah, and that yeah. type of thing. I mean, there's a use for it. Like it has it, a place. That's true. It, but I, I haven't at all. Yeah. Um, you know, Michael Meharry, like that would have been fun. Yeah. Um, like I had a really great conversation with both of the Michaels from 10th Amendment Center at the 2018 uh, convention. Yeah. It would have been cool to get a picture of the three of us. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and Tom Woods hanging out in the background. He yeah. He was there. He just wasn't really much participating. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, you know, that like, so just to show people that we have some libertarian cred, like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we've met some of these people and talked to them extensively yeah. in some cases. Um, you know, like that, uh, you and I talked with Jacob Hornberger for like 45 minutes one night at an Alabama convention. Like that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, again, two years later, talk to him. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I remember you guys." Yeah, I don't know if um, I don't know if he's like a big enough name that people that are listening to this podcast are like, "Oh yeah, Jacob Hornberger, what is my cat doing over there?" Sneezing. Making some funny. Oh, is that what that was? That was some weird noises. That was, a, that was a sneeze. He's allergic to my feet over here. Ah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, so right. yeah, we we could have made some use of it, but we haven't. And, uh, but I, I think that there are, I, I think that a lot of people think that the whole social media thing is just kind of harmless. And I don't think that that's correct. Yeah. Um, especially when you're talking about younger people. Yeah. Um, uh, cause I, I can, like, I'm kind of unaffected by it. Yeah. Like, I, I grew up at a different time and so I don't know. The, well, and you, just... and you haven't been sucked into it. Because well, that's true too. You, you did grow up in a different time, but even people that, like you, didn't grow up with this and mm -hmm. aren't accustomed to it, um, for the most part, have all been sucked into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know people that like that are like you that just aren't participating, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot. Yeah. Well, I, I think that there are some important points to remember when you get on social media and, um, and, and do with this, what you will, uh, the first, and I think most important point is that is to remember that you are the product, not the customer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cause I think that this is a very important point. This is, this speaks to how these platforms are designed. Yeah. You're the product, not the customer. Your yeah. data, your information, your interests, and so forth, that's that's what the product is. Yeah, they're collecting that. <laughs> yes. Um, and so it is It is really geared towards advertisers. Um, the result of that is that it's it's designed for, for two things primarily. Uh, your experience is designed for two things primarily. One is to maximize your screen time. They yeah. are designed to be addictive. And they're good at it. And they're good at it. Um, the way they set up rewards is very Pav Pavlovian, actually. Like yeah. that should, I would hope that that would make a lot of people think about what they're doing just by itself. Since the whole Pavlov experiment was with dogs and making them salivate with food at, to a bell. Um, so like the experiment, yeah, I was, was going to say, I'm not familiar with this. So okay, please this explain. Is, <laughs> this is, this is like, it's a, it was a conditioning experiment. And so, um, the, the short version is that, uh, they, 
took dogs and they would ring a bell and give them a treat. Yeah. Ring a bell, give them a treat, ring a bell, give them a treat. Um, and eventually they could just ring the bell. Yeah. And the dogs would start salivating. Yeah. Cause there was the expectation. Because of the yeah. Treat. Yeah. So, um, and it's really kind of the foundation of a lot of the ways we train animals. Yeah. Um, is that, that you set up a condition with an expected result. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot that we've learned since then, like the, that you can vary some of the, um, like the timing and so forth a little bit, and it actually makes it more addictive or, 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 um, or sets the conditioning better. Yeah. So, uh, you know, experiments like where they have, um, rodents or whatever, press a button for a treat. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the, the rodent would learn to just like sit there and press the button. Yeah. Um, and get treat after treat after treat. Well, then you could start varying the timing of like how long it would take after they press the button before they would get the treat. And that would actually like create a stronger conditioning response. Really? Yeah. So if, you know, instead of every time they press the button, they get a treat two seconds later. If you like vary the timing a little bit, it, it makes the, the conditioning response about pressing the button. Like it, it, it um, strengthens the learned behavior Yeah. to, to vary it a little bit. Hmm. Um, and then there's like uh, good and bad too. So um, like, you know, one of the things that they've learned over time is that on the whole, um, good stimuli and bad stimuli are equally conditioning. Yeah. Like either one is, is just as effective as the other in conditioning. But um, the responses to positive stimuli and negative stimuli are slightly different in that the, the learned response to a positive stimuli is slower than the learned response to a negative stimuli. Okay. All right. So you react more quickly to a negative stimuli than you do to a positive stimuli. Yeah. You can see where this would be adaptive. Yeah. Like in the line, yeah. in the history of humanity. Yeah. So, but the result of that, when you get onto these social media sites where it's, um, it's a machine or an algorithm that's set up to elicit responses. Yeah. Is that, the machine learns more or less that it gets responses quicker if it gives you negative stimuli. Yeah. Right. So that that's part of why these, these platforms end up being so toxic yeah. is because the algorithm is just seeking a response Yeah. and the response happens quicker to negative stimuli. So it essentially you're training the algorithm just through your, like through the natural through human actions. response yeah. to give you negative stimuli. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that leads to the to the other thing that they're it's designed to do, and that's to be manipulative. Yeah, I mean, it's designed to be addictive. Yeah, and it's designed to be manipulative. Yeah, um, to change your behavior to to elicit a specific kind of response. Yeah. Um. So just be aware of that when yeah. you're when you're on, uh, when you're on social media, that you're the product, not the customer. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, it is designed to be both addictive, addictive and manipulative. Yeah. And, um, and it's gotten really good at it. Yeah. Well, that's for sure. So then the, the customer of course is, is advertisers. Um, you know, this is the way the business model is set up. And so, uh, the manipulation generally is to try and get you to, purchase a product or service, you know, yeah. over time. Um, now it doesn't, that doesn't stop actors from using the, um, social media to elicit different kinds of behaviors. Yeah. Like to get you to vote in a I certain way say, get you as to, an example. Yeah. yeah. That, um, that would be the one we hear the most about. <laughs> yeah. To get you to feel a certain way about specific policies and what, what have you. Yeah. Um, so that's why Russia had spent so much on the troll farms, right? Exactly. That, <laughs> absolutely. You know, had to get Trump into office so that he could, yeah. you know, put a bunch of sanctions on Russia and so forth. Yeah. Um, to make sure that nobody 
believed that he really was a Russian agent. That didn't work out for him either. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, you there's uh, there's a sense in which like his own social media, Trump's own social media addiction has uh, affected, um, has probably affected his personality yeah. in the being just like really um, combative or uh, incendiary in his tweets to elicit responses. Yeah. Um, you know, he gets a lot of negative responses. I think he, he rises to that and, uh, and occasionally he gets a positive response and he definitely rises to that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 I kind of wonder if he'd be the same person if it weren't Yeah. for Twitter. Yeah. If he wasn't able to just like, yeah, say crazy stuff and get a response. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, to be yeah. focused on. Yeah. Uh, in that way. Yeah. Um, now, as for uh, like how it has affected people's outlooks, um, there, I mean, you know, there's no proof of causation here, but there is definitely a correlation between the rise in use of social media and um, rise in levels of depression and anxiety uh, throughout society, but especially in younger people. Um, there is a strong correlation between the rise in social media use and the rise in teen suicides. Yeah. Um, and, and if you think about like people's experience, it kind of makes sense because it's, it's easy to feel inadequate when you're looking at a curated version of somebody else's life. Yeah. Right. Like you're, you're not, you know, we all have the ups and downs, the, the vicissitudes of our own lives. Um, but when you're looking at somebody's social media feed, your friends or peers or whatever, yeah, like they're not showing you all the bad stuff. Yeah, you're only seeing the stuff that they're putting up there for you to see. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's real easy to think like, oh, that person has such a much better life than me. Well, not even bigger than that. You look at it, you go, you start scrolling through your feed, and it's everybody has so much of a better life than me. Right. Like it's that, cause that's just, if, if that's all you're kind of taking in, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's where your that's where your mind goes. Yeah. Whether consciously or like subconsciously, it may not mm -hmm. even be like a conscious thing, but like that's, you're still putting all of that in, mm -hmm. you know? And you couple that with an algorithm that has learned that it gets uh, the response that it's seeking more easily or more quickly if it gives you uh, something negative. Yeah. If it if it makes you mad instead of making you happy, um, yeah. you know that. I don't know. I, I I don't. I'm not opposed to social media. I li I like the idea of social media. Well, I think in the same way that I like the idea of a cryptocurrency. Yeah. Um. You, you like it, you just don't use it. Yeah. With both of those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's absolutely true. But but there's a reason that I don't use both of those things. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not... It, again, It's I like the idea. I like, um, I like what it could be, yeah. not what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and with social media, I think it's really just a balancing act. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't think... I think you not having any isn't exactly great, but I think having too much is not great either. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's just like a lot of things in life. You just kind of got to find that balance. Well, I, I think that um, that not having any kind of... Okay, so it's e even like a small amount of social media, it's like an interruption. Yeah. You know, like it, it just draws attention away. Yeah. I, I mean... I, like I leave my phone in the other room all the time. Yeah. I like leaving my phone in the other room yeah. because then I don't hear it ding. Yeah. Um, I don't hear text messages. I don't hear emails I, it, yeah. because it's peaceful. Yeah. Because whatever it is that I'm doing, when something happens with my phone, it splits my attention. Yeah. So now suddenly whatever it was that I was doing, I, I'm, um, I don't know. My attention is divided and now I'm curious, like, what is it? What it's that same kind of dopamine hit, yeah. right? That you get from, uh, likes and, um, thumbs up and whatever else on social media things like, Oh, you know, somebody's engaging with me and they're engaging with me. Uh, and that feels good. Yeah. Um, 
It, it does, but at the same time, like it makes me less productive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, I think, uh, and I wonder, especially people who have grown up with it. Yeah. Like how capable are they of actually concentrating and, and devoting their attention to something yeah. for any period of time? Because yeah. I mean, watch a lot of people, but especially younger people, like see if they go more than two minutes without looking at their phone. Well, and something else just kind of along those lines, talking to your younger generation, Mm -hmm. like they don't even so much, at least a lot of them that I've spoken with, it's not even that they so much like social media or like are into it. It's they feel like it's almost like an obligation. Mm -hmm. Like it's just something you have to do. Like you can't like the idea of somebody like you that just doesn't participate like is not an option for them. Well, I'm sure that it seems like, I'm well, sure it for, feels that way to them. I, I'm sure it does because but, the environment they're in, mm-hmm. like, I mean, that's where all of their peers are at. You yeah. Know? But there, there's a real life out there. You can like interact with actual people in front of you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, so skip the, skip the, um, FaceTime and like go meet somewhere. Oh yeah. And I think even, and you know what you're going to have a better experience that way anyway. And I think a lot of the a, a lot of young people understand that but at the mm-hmm. same time it talking to I mean I have two daughters so like yeah. I mean this this comes up um but it's almost like there's an obligation like even if you're doing all the other stuff like you're saying going out and doing stuff and that type of thing you still it, it's it's like they feel like they're being left out of part of society mm-hmm. if they're not there, you know? Yeah. Um, even if it's not something they particularly want to be a part of, you know? There is a real danger um, that I, I hope people can recognize because I, I don't think I have, like, the, the ability or the psychological understanding to explain it. But um, there is a real danger of... Uh, your image being dictated by others. Yeah. Like your image, your self image yeah. being dictated by others, which I think is what social media really does to people. Yeah. I don't, I, I think that a lot of people, people that are heavily engaged in social media don't really know themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe I your don't... oldest daughter might be an exception. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. She's got a pretty good idea who she is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't think that that's real common. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, I think that that social media creates this environment where people are uh, people define themselves by what the way others engage with them rather than yeah in and of themselves. Yeah. And I think that's dangerous. Oh, I, I think that's it's, really it's dangerous. Really bad. Yeah. No, I absolutely would agree. Um. So, uh, you know, do what you want to do. Yeah. This well, is like one of those things about libertarianism that we may come back around to, but <laughs> like do what you want to do, but just be aware that this isn't a harmless activity. Yeah. Um, it's not just keeping up with your friends. Yeah. Uh, the, the system is designed both to keep your attention, yeah. um, and to push you in certain directions. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it's not for you. Yeah. It's about getting things from you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a free platform. You don't have to pay anything to be there. Mm-hmm. That should be your first in, inkling. <laughs> it's <laughs> like know? an abusive relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the whole relationship is built a, a, around the platform extracting things from you. Yeah. You may feel like you're getting something out of it, but... Yeah. It doesn't care whether you do or not, really. Yeah. Only insofar as it keeps you engaged. Yeah, and coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and even more so as far as talking about just being aware, like be aware of what your your kids are doing on there too, because yeah. that's, I mean, that to me, that's the big danger. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, like I said something about FaceTime, I, I don't feel like that kind of thing is as bad. I don't think like texting with your friends or or yeah. FaceTime or any of those things that are that are actual social yeah. activities yeah. Um, are the same as scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through Facebook, TikTok, TikTok video, 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 video. Yeah. It, it's not the same, and um, and w- I mean, I don't, I don't think that the like constantly on the phone texting or whatever is great yeah. either. But it's certainly 
uh, I, I, far less dangerous, I think, than just um, yeah, spending all day scrolling. Yeah. 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 Um, especially because it, and I think that it's obvious why um, it one of those reported feelings is a feeling of isolation to people that are um, heavily engaged with social media. Yeah. Um, that they're interacting with all these people, but they're all alone. Yeah. Yeah. And it's true. Like, I mean, I've spent a bunch of time just scrolling through Facebook and different things. And I know mm-hmm. that feeling. Like, I mean, you feel like it's, it's really hard to describe, but it's you, you feel like you're connected with all of these people and these things, but it's, it leaves, it leaves you wanting more response from those people and those things. Mm-hmm. And the more of it you get, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like it, it, it's not going to, it's not going to fill that void. Yeah. Like I, that's thing, what it's designed to do. Though, the, yeah. Is to, it's to have you yearn for more engagement. Yeah. And the, I've learned the way to fill that void is to go outside and do something. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, like, I mean, I will sit because it's very easy for me to sit and just scroll through Facebook and watch TV all evening. Mm-hmm. But like after like 20 minutes of doing that, a lot of times I'll be like, man, I need to go like do something. I need to go work on my car or I need to go cut the grass. Like yeah. get, I need to get off this couch and go do something. Because if not, like I could very easily sit here and do this all evening yeah. and feel like crap the whole time. Yeah. You know, or I can go do something and, and I'll feel better. <laughs> I remember one of the things that, and, um, and you may remember me talking to you about this when we first started this podcast yeah. is that I had a concern that I would get, um, really wrapped up in the number of downloads and the number of likes and the number of shares, because I know I have that kind of personality to get addicted to that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I like have really pointedly tried to avoid paying much attention to that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because Because I, because because I am that guy. Yeah. I am that guy. Absolutely. That, that could have become the podcaster who I upload it tonight I check tomorrow how many downloads have we had. I check the day after that how many downloads have we had. Oh yeah. no, we have less than last week. Oh, you know, yeah. why are why are you know why aren't people engaged in this one? What have we done wrong? Like, how do we fix it? You know, um, yeah. I was actually reassured a couple of weeks ago after the uh, hetero spirit <laughs> podcast yeah. that we didn't really get any significantly more engagement. Yeah with that title because I felt like, Oh, you know, if I, I, I know myself well enough to, yeah. to know that if I had seen significantly more engagement with a title like that, that I would be intentionally looking trying to come for up, those titles. Yeah. With a, yeah. with an incendiary kind of title that yeah. to draw people in. Yeah. And so thank you guys out there <laughs> <laughs> for not feeding into that. You, you saved yourself <laughs> for more than seminary titles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now I got now there's like people out there listening going how do I make him how do I make more engagement on that kind of title so that we hear <laughs> anyway um but I I just think that people need to be aware that it's not a harmless thing um it, it is manipulating you um and the it, you know your your engagement is the goal of the system you're the product not the customer yeah I, I think yeah. that that's just important stuff to remember Oh, absolutely. Um, and I really highly recommend it. I, I'm not a person that's going to tell people how to raise their kids, do what you want, but I highly recommend you limit screen time. Yeah. I mean, I, you're not wrong. You know, as best you can. Yeah. It's tough. I'm one of those parents right now. Yeah. Try and direct it into something productive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the same thing, like I was talking about, like I do with myself, like yeah. when I've, when I find myself stuck in one of those loops, like get up and go do something. Mm-hmm. I think you have to do the same thing with your kids. Yeah. Like it may not always be the most pleasant thing, but sometimes you just got to like, like, all right, get off the couch. We're going to go do this or yeah. we're going to go ride our bikes or, mm-hmm. you know, like snap them out of it, you yeah. know, or even at like, least periodically, you know, even, uh, if you, if you can't quite get away from the screen time, like try and direct it again into something more productive. And instead of scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or whatever, like get on the computer and start uh, link hopping in, in uh, Wikipedia or something. Yeah. Like yeah. learn something. Yeah, or, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
which that's something that I have definitely buried myself in more than once is to just, yeah. you know, start reading about something on Wikipedia and then you find another interesting topic from that topic and you bounce to that one. And next thing you know, you've got 20 something windows open and, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, but that's at least more productive. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, it's not actively manipulating you. Yeah. Well, and you're actually learning something and, and that's something a lot of people like a misconception with social media is that they have this idea, well, I'm learning so much stuff on here. Yeah, probably not. No, you're not. I promise you, you're not like, no, you're, I promise you, you're not like, it's not how it works. Um, so we're like 30 minutes in. I definitely didn't it's, intend to spend this much time with this. Right. We got, we got sucked down the rabbit hole. Uh, we weren't even actually say, on social media. Yeah, and we got sucked in. <laughs> sucked down the social media rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, because we were talking about it before the podcast, may as well talk about um, RFKJ. Yeah. So, and I'm going to, uh, my lead in to this is going to be um, that I have a friend that I got a text message from the other, uh, like a week ago, maybe now. Um, talking about, oh, you know, RFK juniors joined the race, uh, you know, this, uh, what do you call it? Nutcase. Yeah. RFK. I was like, well, why do you think he's a nutcase? Yeah. And, um, and the response was that, you know, he's still pushing the debunked idea that vaccines cause, um, autism. So that's, a, that's our starting point. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't really argue with him too much. I, I just, I, now the point that I made to him is, and I said, you know, I may be wrong about this, but my understanding about RFKs, uh, RFKJs, I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> use all four, yeah. um, RFKJs, uh, uh, position on vaccines is that they, that, um, some of them contain, um, mercury, uh, or aluminum or other like dangerous, heavy metals, heavy metals and chemicals that, yeah. you know, that can cause harm. Yeah. Um, and that they're, you know, they're put out there like the, the, again, like a completely safe kind of product and they're yeah. not yeah. necessarily. A completely safe product that if you have a bad experience with, you have no recourse. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and he, he replied, he was like, I just did a quick search and, um, you know, found that he made this claim on an interview just a few days ago. I, I didn't bother to check cause. Yeah. I don't care enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, frankly, but um, I I wondered at the time if if it was the ABC interview because I I'm aware although I haven't listened to it yeah I'm aware of an ABC interview where they made an announcement ABC made an announcement that they had cut part of the interview because um, RFKJ had made some mis information disinformation claims about vaccines and so forth and i wondered like i wonder if he ran a search and he found some kind of link that said that rfk made claims about vaccines causing autism in an abc interview yeah and that that was his yeah that was his I reference mean, because we don't know what he said cuz yeah, they cut it out of the they interview cut it out. well and i had just <laughs> assumed cuz i heard about them cutting that out of the interview as well um, I had just assumed when I heard that, that it was in reference to the COVID vaccine. Yeah. Now, I don't know, because like I say, I actually am really interested to sit down and listen to what they aired of that interview. Um, and I haven't, but it, I just was under the assumption that it was in reference to COVID because mm -hmm. apparently we're still like, um, I don't know, restricting that type of speech. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so, and I was thinking about this re recently, too, because you still, it, it amazes me that you still run into people. You want to talk about RFKJ still making a claim about uh, vaccines causing autism that's been totally debunked. Yeah. Which I'm not sure that that's I, entirely it, accurate anyway. I don't know but, that that's accurate, but... Um, but I haven't looked deeply enough into it. I, I don't me know. either. Like, I don't know. I mean, I, like, I'm I just skeptical of any kind of claims like that at this point. Well, me too. And I'm, <laughs> like I say, I'm, I mean, you know, obviously with the COVID vaccine, mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, I'm sure we've talked about it before, but I'm not anti-vax, no. you know, I mean, I, 
I, but there are risk involved with all vaccines. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, I believe that. Yeah. But I agree. Uh, I mean, there are things that have been around a long time that seem to be pretty safe. Yeah. But nothing's 100%. Not everything. Certainly. Um, yeah. and, but what I was going to say is that, you know, you talk about the, this crazy claim, I still run into people and, and actually my friend might be one of them. Cause I, I know that he kind of bought into the whole COVID Narrative, thing. Yeah. Um, that believe that, you know, masks saved millions of people and vaccines saved millions of people. And Oh man, it's so good thing that we had lockdowns and, yeah, and all that stuff. Think of how many people would have died otherwise. And, uh, you know, it's a good thing that we have vaccines. They're not keeping people out of the hospital, but they're keeping people from dying, even though there's like, there's no data to support this. Yeah. Well, you're trying to prove a negative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like you would know what the results would have been if they hadn't gotten a vaccine. Exactly. I mean, there, there are yeah. comparative studies that you can do. Yeah. Um, but I haven't seen data out there that shows that, at least not in like one of your big problems is you know, quality of the data going in has an impact on the quality of the results coming out. So you have, um, people that are considered unvaccinated if they had, uh, the two initial COVID vaccines, but they didn't get a booster within six months. Yeah. They're considered unvaccinated in these kinds of studies. And like, no, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. They're vaccinated. Oh yeah, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Or uh, that they got the vaccine, but it had been less than two weeks since their vaccine, so they're considered unvaccinated they got, because yeah, they, they had, got you know, COVID in the in between time, right? Yeah. Um, and so forth. So th- there's like garbage data to begin with. Yeah. And I don't know if any of this will ever be sussed out, but um, what I can tell people to go to, and I may have the link wrong on this, but I'm sure that you can find it. Uh, it's something like, I'm pretty sure this is correct, but um, it's something like COVID charts quiz. Oh, yeah. Dot com, I think. <laughs> um, and it, it's a collection of, uh, of charted data. Yeah. And it's just asking you questions. Yeah. And it says, okay, um, you know, these two graphs represent a place that had vaccine mandates and a place that did not. Yeah. Which one's the one with vaccine mandates? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this chart uh, has uh, points marked um, on, or it, it, or actually, I think that they're even looser than that. It's like, okay, um, this is a chart of a place that had, um, that instituted uh, mask mandates um, on a certain date. Yeah. Click on the chart where the mask mandates were created. It, yeah. Or adopted. Yeah. And good luck. <laughs> yeah. You can't tell. There's yeah. no way you can tell. And it's yeah. a bunch of comparisons between, you know, uh, even like neighbor states or counties um, where one of them had mask mandates and one of them didn't. Uh, you know, one of them had vaccine mandates and one of them didn't. Yeah. Um, one of them had lockdowns and one of them didn't. And it's just showing infection rates. And it's like, pick the one, you know, that had the intervention. And you can't tell. Yeah, because it, it didn't. Because it had no impact. Yeah, it it had no statistical impact on the the spread of the virus. Yeah. None of these interventions had any statistical impact on the spread of the virus. Yeah. But it doesn't yeah. matter because yeah. there are a lot of people that are so that married to still, that narrative. Yeah. Yeah. That they can't possibly let it go. I mean, you know, and I had a friend arguing with me about how, well, there's more people that say that you should uh, get the vaccine than than don't. Um, You know, uh, well, I'm not a doctor. Oh, God, I hate that one. Okay. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah, I'm not a doctor either, but I can look at data. I'm capable of evaluating data. Yeah. Well, I'm Um, not a doctor, but I can make decisions about my health myself. Well, like, that too. I mean, I mean, I'll listen to the doctor. I'm not mm-hmm. saying I like ignore my doctor's orders, but mm-hmm. like I take them under advisement. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, okay, and so we're getting off track here. Um, this isn't supposed to be a rerun. But of this the is what's going to be interesting about having RFK in the race okay. is this conversation is going to be had, and it's not just going to be had on the right. It's going <laughs> to have to be had on the left. Biden's, I mean, he's going to do his best to ignore this guy. Yeah, but he's going to have a hard time doing it. Yeah, like they've this already message, said that they're not going to have debates be- for the primaries. Well, there's no way they can because there's no way he can Biden can stand on <laughs> yeah. the stage with this guy and go toe to toe and have this argument with him. Mm -hmm. Even though RFK is not the best presenter there is, he does have a health condition that makes his speech a little, um, I mean, he just struggles. Yeah. Um, He's hard to listen to sometimes. He is. But even, even so like the dude, he will mop the floor with Biden on this. Yeah. Um, well, he's, he's very well read. He's very knowledgeable. He seems like a very bright guy. I and and that's maybe kind of the point that that I want to make about this is that um that he he was good on the covid stuff mm-hmm. and the vaccine mandates and yeah. he's good on Ukraine. I was fixing to say there's another big issue and you're right it's Ukraine. Like he understands what's going on there and and isn't willing isn't he's willing to talk about it. Yeah. You know. And so he he's been good or is good on two of the most important issues that have faced this country in the last four years. Yeah. I don't really give a damn what he his stand on whether <laughs> vaccines cause autism is I, yeah. I like I don't think that that's relevant because what's the worst thing that he could do yeah. with his belief that vaccines cause autism if he if that's even his actual belief. I don't know. Yeah. Um, if he were to to gain the presidency. Like, okay, so the worst thing that he could do is ban vaccines. Yeah. But I don't think that's the direction he's going. I don't, because yeah. everything else that he he presents comes down to, uh, like, he seems to be a person that really believes in personal liberty and personal responsibility. Yeah. Like, for you to make your own choice. That he would take away mandates. Yeah. That he would take away the liability shield um, exactly. that these uh, pharma companies enjoy right now. And that would um, be a big one. That one would be enough to get him assassinated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I hate to say that, the, but yeah, I the mean. third Kennedy assassinated. Yeah. I mean, um, you may be looking at that, though, because you don't want to mess with big pharma, man. That's true. Well, you saying. ever seen The Constant Gardener? Oh, I haven't. <laughs> it's but. it's not a movie for everybody, but it's probably worth seeing. Yeah. Um, same guy that did City of God, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Any, anyway, I I think that um, I think that his position on that leads to a more uh, more free and open society rather than a more authoritarian one, yeah. and so I'm not really concerned about that. Yeah, I, I I think that it's a big step um, to have somebody like that. You kind of have to wonder if he doesn't believe or at least have an inkling that the government that he's trying to take <laughs> control of, take the lead in is um, the same government that uh, killed his uncle and maybe his father. <laughs> you yeah. know, like that's kind of a weird thing. That's got to be a red pill thing. Uh, oh, yeah. So, but that, but that's what I think is the most interesting thing about him is that he doesn't believe in the infallibility of government. Yeah. It's very clear that he doesn't believe in the infallibility of government, which is, or that government can solve all the problems. Which is interesting coming from a Democrat. Yeah, like because well, that's it's more, not. It's an old style Democrat. Yeah. Um, he's he's a Democrat more in the vein of his father and his uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be interesting having him in the race. It's going to create some conversations that absolutely wouldn't be happening if he wasn't in the race. And like I say, I don't want to start placing bets, but don't count this guy out, man. Um, I mean, for one, he's a Kennedy. So like that alone gives you some street cred right there. Yeah. And I don't like that either, but whatever. I, don't, I mean, I don't particularly <laughs> like it, but it gives him something to... American aristocracy. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it it's there, though. It exists. Yeah, that's true. Um, and, and like I say... I, I'd rather have the, the Kennedy um, dynasty <laughs> than the Bush or the Clinton dynasty. Well, yeah. So, especially yeah. at this point. Especially <laughs> yeah, with, no I mean, kidding. this particular guy. I mean, I'm mm. sure I disagree with him on a whole host of things. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it, it'll be interesting to be having this conversation in, in this election. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the things that I was saying is like, 
you know, truthfully, like his position on, um, on vaccines is kind of irrelevant to me just in the face of his position on Ukraine. His yeah. position on Ukraine is enough for yeah. me to say, well, I'm discounting the rest of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's an important enough of an issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same thing that I did with, uh, Tulsi. Tulsi. Yeah. Which is, Hey, you know, you want to at least stop fighting the war for the terrorists. Yeah. You want a $15 minimum wage? Well, you know what? I can deal with that to stop fighting the war for the terrorists. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I'll, I'll tell you, and is this is something that, this is one of those moments too, I think, where we may get to see like just how much the mainstream media still has control on things. Mm -hmm. Because what what he's going to do is he's going to go out and do small media. He's going to do podcasts. He's going to be doing interviews with different small groups. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it'll be interesting to see if he can get some headwind, especially given the message that is outside the mainstream. Yeah, he's al he's already got like twenty percent among Democrats. Uh, yeah, I mean that's like he's already pulling at like twenty percent among uh, on Democrat only or Democrat voting only or whatever. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, that's that's I mean that's something. I mean, you yeah. especially if you look on the other side where the Republicans are at. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you've got like DeSantis and Trump, and then everybody else is in the zero and one percent. Yeah. You know, and for him to, I mean, he's on the other side, but for him to not be at zero and one percent says something. I bet he's pulling higher than uh, Kamala. <laughs> you know he is. <laughs> <laughs> you know he is. Uh, so, this or, is somebody. Um, or uh, Gavin Newsom. Oh, yeah. So you think they're going to roll out Gavin Newsom? I don't know. Um I think that they're probably desperately trying to find somebody instead of Biden. Oh, there, there's no question about that. Um, and he just seems like the logical answer. I think that that's bad for his career. I think if yeah. he was smart, he would say no thank you Yeah. Uh, if it's offered to him. Um, but he just seems like the most obvious yeah. Well, they don't, there's one. not much. And I think that he's ambitious enough and not smart enough to realize that he should wait. <laughs> that he should step out. Yeah. Give it a minute. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, but there's just nobody else on that side. Yeah. I mean, like you, you, you're still hearing the Michelle Obama's name keeps yeah, know, rolling so. around. Wait till um, Hillary <laughs> comes back, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Hillary again. Like there's just nobody on that side. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I, I think that the, they would be smarter, you know, pushing somebody like an Elizabeth Warren Yeah. this time around. Yeah. But that's not going nowhere. Yeah. She's, she's a terrible candidate too. Yeah. You're right. There's not, they don't have a lot of options. Actually, Kennedy is like one of their best guys. Like that's somebody that people would get excited about. Yeah. Um, but he's just like, he's presenting he's the wrong too message. too far outside of the mainstream for them. Yeah. Um, and, and I hate using that word mainstream. I've done it twice here and I keep catching myself because mm -hmm. I think these ideas are more mainstream than, than people think. Mm -hmm. Then the media wants you to believe, I'll put it that way. Yeah. Like these ideas are definitely more mainstream than the, than the media would have you believe. But. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. So on a really rough transition here, we've got about 10 minutes for our main topic. All right. <laughs> let's, let's squeeze it in. <laughs> um, so it came up just uh, with the um, with the attacks on immigrants by immigrants <laughs> mm. <laughs> recently. Yep. So it just you know just kind of the the question of immigration and and so forth. Um, Build the wall. And and what I think is fun about this is that you and I have different positions on this. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people complain about the. Uh, well, I say a lot of people. A, a few people complain that there's only one point of view presented on the podcast most of the time, which is yeah. true. Yeah. We have an agenda. We are libertarians. Yeah. yeah. We, we have an agenda here. There is a, <laughs> there is a purpose to this, yeah. um, is to present these ideas. Yeah. It's, it's one opinion, but it's opinion that you don't hear very frequently, I think. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the point of this podcast is to present, um, these ideas that a small percentage of the population has that are the best ideas. Yeah. But most people don't hear. But you don't hear about because them. Yeah. you can't get people outside of the status paradigm. Yeah. And this is one of those topics where I can't get you out of the status <laughs> paradigm. 
And uh, so, you know, there, there's the the starting point is like, OK, so um, my assumption when the, the guy ran the truck through the um, the immigrants at the bus stop was that, oh, you know, it's somebody who has bought into this idea that the um, immigrants are coming in, foreigners are coming in here and they're stealing our jobs and they're destroying America and they're sucking away all the money and, you know, whatever. That um, tired old narrative is. Yeah. And, because none of that is true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then it turns out it was it was actually an immigrant that did it. Yeah. And so then the next thought was, okay, so maybe it's somebody who um, who came into this country illegally, like an immigrant that came in the right way and spent the ten thousand plus dollars that it took to do it and so forth, and is and is resentful of the people who are cheating the system. Yeah. And still getting the benefits. Yeah. Um. And I think all of this comes back to, and and this is one like I like this uh, topic because it's it's one of those situations where it's hard to get people to understand because, like, why do I like this topic that's hard to get people to understand? <laughs> um, because because it's one of those topics that that everybody starts from the statist framework. Yeah. And that if you can just step outside the statist framework, you can recognize that the problem is created by the state. Well, I absolutely agree with that. The problem is the reason that people can't step out of that status mind frame mm -hmm. is because it's all we know. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I mean I, it's it I mean that's that's the reason. Like mm -hmm. so But there's a benefit to being able to step back far enough to recognize that there's another way of organizing society. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and that's, I, you that's know the me. point of this I'm, podcast. I'm I, all for reorganizing society. I got all kinds of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to to start, like at the very base level, the whole immigration system is built around this idea that the government can centrally plan anything. Yeah. Um, How much the, labor is needed? Yeah, the economy is what you know we're mostly talking about here. Okay, she couldn't stay away long enough. She's in my lap now. Yeah. Um, I'll try and keep her calm. I don't know that I can. <laughs> this is a this is a cat that has a high gear and a neutral and nothing in between. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so uh, yeah, it, it's the idea of the immigration system is built around the idea that the the government can plan, um, can centrally plan what people we need in this country at any given time. Yeah. Which well, they're completely incapable of doing. Yeah, I mean, and I would agree with that. Like, I mean, I'm I'm a not an open open borders guy, but mm -hmm. I agree with the fact that the government doesn't know what we need as far as labor and and how many people we need. Like, that's that's mm -hmm. not, uh, yeah, they they're not capable of that. Okay, so maybe we should do this. And what do you think should be done? And I'll just respond. I mean, I to me. What the 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 system I would have in place mm -hmm. would be a system where you would you would you would come over through a sponsorship. So if you want to come to this country, if you're coming from Mexico or wherever it is, it wouldn't even necessarily have to be Mexico. But you mm -hmm. want to come to this country from another country, somebody would need to sponsor you to bring you over. And it, as and their responsibilities in a sponsorship would be they're going to help you find the job, they're going to give you somewhere to stay, they're going to get you on your feet when you get here. Okay, what if that's an employer? Is it okay for that to be an I employer? I do think that that's okay to be an employer because okay. I think if, if a company decided, uh, whether it's a group of farmers or it was Walmart, mm -hmm. if they decide, well, we need some people to come over here to do work, well, I mean, they're going to help. They would They would be helping you at least as far as making sure you had a paycheck. Yeah. And then maybe you've got to figure the rest of that out on your own as far as where to stay. Or maybe they put you up in a hotel for like a month until you, you know, mm -hmm. can make arrangements for somewhere to live. But I think there should be some, the idea that we just let people run into this country with no, um, with just no plan or anything. They just show up here and now they're on our streets. Like that's a problem. Like, and it doesn't matter to me what, I mean, it's, it like I mean, you just go to your border cities of this country, and they'll tell you like this is a problem. Like people just flooding in here, yeah. um, and I think that that a system like that, a sponsorship system, would would fix a lot of that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like that as a stepping stone. Um, I uh, would say that, you know, the problems that arise from immigration are uh, problems that arise from too much government. So yeah. um, people just being on the streets and so forth because they can't find jobs. That's yeah. because of some limitations on employers that are set well, by I the government. Well, I absolutely agree with that. Um, so, and, and this is why I think, like, I, I think that the open borders position is the is the right position, actually. Um, I think that so, there are problems, certainly. Uh, yeah. You know, there's no utopia here. Well, um, and, and there's but, particular problems given our stir- current state of government. Like, so the idea that giving everything as it is right now, we're just going to open up the border. Like you're asking for, I mean, that's that to me, that's collapsitarian talk. That's like, we're just going to collapse this government and rebuild it the way we want. Like if you're talking about just is leaving. so bad? <laughs> well. <laughs> that's not I, my position. Though. I know it's not your position, but there are a lot of people who, who are of that position where we just mm-hmm. need to collapse it and rebuild it the way we want. Um, and I'm not of that persuasion. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just I think that's that's the wrong way to go about it. But if you were if you were in a position of power and you wanted to do that, like I think just opening up the borders would be a good way to do it. I mean, yeah. I think that it will cause enough problems that you can very easily see this government falling. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so I I think that um, I, I like the idea of a of a personal sponsorship. Uh, I think that you know one of the issues that we have here is that something like forty percent of the land in the U.S. is owned by the government, not people. Yeah. Uh, that a lot of this problem could be solved by private property. Yeah. Like you let people onto your property that you want to allow onto your property, and you don't let people onto your property if you don't. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so I'm, all, I'm all for that. If the whole border was private property, then um, people would only be able to go into places that that permitted where they them. were allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you know that that's a, a again a problem of government. Um, in terms of employment, like the 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 old story of that they're stealing our jobs. Yeah. That's again a problem of government because the government has placed so many requirements on employers. Um, about how they uh, hire people legally, that it has become a much better deal for them to hire people illegally, where they don't have to pay for health care, where they can pay less than the minimum wage, where they're not responsible for all these taxes and so forth, and and various other requirements. So the, the government has created a system where it is more advantageous for an employer to hire somebody illegally than legally. Absolutely. Even if they're less productive, because yeah. it costs them so much less. Yeah. Now, there's also problems with that argument anyway, because a lot of the jobs that that immigrants are hired into, yeah, uh, Americans don't want. Well, they're not they're not able to hire Americans to do these jobs, and they need somebody to do the job, and an illegal immigrant is happy to. Oh, absolutely. Um, that's really common, especially yeah. when you're talking about people that don't speak English. Yeah. Well, and that's as like just you just think about like farming jobs out like picking mm-hmm. and and planting. Well, we had a huge problem here that. in Alabama years ago when they uh, when they really cracked down on illegal immigrants working. Yep. And there were a bunch of crops that just like died in the field. Yeah, because you can't find Americans to do those jobs. Like mm-hmm. they're just not going to do them. Like yeah, it's just what it is. Um. Now you know. So if you get rid of, besides the fact that the the government placing the responsibility for health insurance on employers yeah. um, has created all kinds of problems in the healthcare system. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and one of those things is, well, now you're beholden to your job because you can't go to a new job and start over, especially if you have any kind of uh, medical condition Yeah. because you can't go somewhere you're not else get with on the, their pre, yeah, yeah. the early, you know, um, preexisting conditions, issues and so forth. Um, Besides the fact that it's, it seems to me at this point that it's clearly more expensive this way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even with my employer paying half of my health insurance, I still pay more for health insurance than I paid as an individual yeah. 10 years ago <laughs> on my own Yeah. Um, for equivalent coverage. Yeah. All right. So, because that wasn't, that used the, to be a perk. Yeah. All right. Like, like that used to be uh, something, something that the businesses would offer to try and try and get people to come work to for them people. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so, uh, you know, and the other thing is minimum wage. Keep driving up minimum wages. All that does is put people out of work. Um, some jobs you still need people to work them, but you're not going to pay people more than they produce. Yeah. Yeah. And so if minimum wage is more than they produce, then, and you can hire, what are you trying to do, Kat? Um, then you, <laughs> this is why we used to do this in this other room where it was closed off and we didn't have to deal with the cats. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, um, if you can't hire somebody to, to produce as much as minimum wage is, then it's better for you to hire somebody off the books, pay them under the table and pay them less than minimum wage to get the production out of them. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just created an incentive. Now, yeah. the other thing that that does though, is that it draws immigrants here. Yeah. Because they can get these jobs. Yeah. It draws immigrants here. Yeah. Um, and the, so, you know, you, we were talking the other night, you were talking about schools. Oh, well, you know, okay. Yeah. So first off, Immigrants actually don't take a lot of public money, yeah. but you know, and the, the kind of things that they, the services that they use like public roads and so forth, like that's a tiny, tiny, tiny yeah. the road uh, expense, thing, yeah. but you were talking about schools. But the so schools, like, I think that that's a issue worth discussing. It's an issue worth discussing. You're right. But the, the majority of immigrants are not immigrant families with children yeah. that come over here. Um, it, it's a lot of young males coming to work. Yeah. And sending that money back home. There's a lot of that, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of the families coming over too. Like, there are. Well, yeah. n now there's like all these protections and so forth too. Yeah. Um, which, which is which uh, you're not wrong to say is a product of government. Yeah. Like, I mean, I I wholeheartedly agree with that, but it's still a problem. <laughs> so, I, I guess um, to try and wrap this up because we're going to have to take up this discussion some other time. Yeah. Just like something to think about between now and the next episode when, when we spend more time on this because we spend less time on social media. Yeah. Um, is that I, I think that you're taking a problem that's caused by government and saying, okay, the answer to it is that we need some regulations to limit the damage. We need, we need the government to step in here and create some regulations to limit the damage that government does by its own <laughs> actions. Wow. And, and that I think is a, is a, is a non-starter. It's, it's an yeah. unproductive answer to the problem. Well, government can't fix government problems. Like what I think of every time I, I think of this issue yeah. and the problems, the pro I mean, immigration has problems. Yeah. There's no doubt. Um, and I, I don't dispute that at all, but I, I think I can take every single one of those problems and bring it back to government. And yeah. so I think that the answer is not to have more government or to, to, add government to limit the damage that government can do. You know, I, yeah. I, I think that you're just, you're creating a bigger and bigger problem. And we're not even addressing the issue of like what it requires, what kind of um, problems it causes for, for real citizens of this country, for them to enforce yeah. a strong border in yeah. this country. But um, I, I keep thinking of that. I, I wish I could find this video. It would like run in a loop on our website, if I could find this video, but years and years ago, and I know I, I bring this for those of you that are new that haven't heard me talk about this video. Yeah. Um, my office used to run the weather channel on a big screen TV in the front of the office all the time. <laughs> and I was coming in from something and there was a, some kind of ice storm somewhere. And like, I don't remember the details, but this is the part that I remember is that a, a school bus, public school bus, had had a low velocity accident where it had bumped into like a telephone pole or something after sliding on the ice. Yeah. And so don't worry, no kids were hurt. Everything was fine. It was like yeah. they hit a telephone pole at like three miles an hour or something like that. Not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then the, the calls go out. Yeah. Right. So then a, um, a public service ambulance arrives, a, a, a county, yeah. A county ambulance service arrives and slides on the ice and bumps into the back of the school bus. Yeah. And then two cops, two police cars arrive yeah. and slide on the ice and bump into the back of the ambulance and the school bus. Yeah. <laughs> and so you have a problem that originated with government 
and you called in more government and they just they just stacked onto the problem they just made the problem bigger and it bigger just, like added new problems and created a bigger version of the old problem it's it's the snowball effect yeah and and that's <laughs> i mean this yeah the snow <laughs> yeah the snowball <laughs> effect is why the government is as it's big the as ice it is ball effect really ice it, ball okay yeah. <laughs> well at any rate um mm. it's it's an effect it, that's what you get when you ask for government. Like you may start with the smallest government ever, but in 200 years you're going to have the biggest government ever because it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Like it's just it's yeah. I mean it just perpetuates itself. So I, I think um, government interventions to try and limit the damages of uh, immigration are an example of this. Yeah. Um, and like one more point to think about, and we can flesh this out more next week. Um, in the meantime, though, is that there is a legitimate possibility. And I got this from Jacob Hornberger, by the way, okay. um, talking with him about this. Yeah. Um, so I give credit where it's due here that like, yeah. and, and he had an impact on my ideas about, um, about immigration. immigration. Yeah. But this particular point really kind of stood out to me. And I, I think it's something that we don't really consider is that like opening the borders, um, the problems that arise from opening the borders in terms of um, the taxpayer footing the bill for a bunch of non-citizens doing whatever yeah, may be a real strong catalyst to change that welfare system. Yeah. Because when the taxpayers start, are, start realizing that they're responsible for this, yeah. you know, it's, it's that not in my backyard kind of response where they're like, yeah. okay, so now they're starting to put pressure on their representatives to end all these, these various welfare systems that they're, that they're paying for non-citizens to take advantage of. Yeah. It, it could be a real catalyst in changing our general reliance on government period. Yeah. It may not, Yeah, but but there is that possibility, and yeah. and it can't be discounted because there is there is a real strong like when people start feeling the expense of something themselves when it, when it starts hitting on their own pocketbooks yeah. and they're seeing it out in front of them, there is it's far more likely that they will realize that what they have been advocating yeah. is not beneficial to anybody, particularly them. Yeah, and put pressure on government to change those systems. Yeah. My fear in that is just that the the system you're going to change is the immigration system. They're not going to actually do away with the social programs and stuff that mm -hmm. that we. Well, but would. you're advocating a change in the immigration system anyway. I am. Yeah. So oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so what you know? What's the difference? Yeah. But agreed. But we'll pick it up next week. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, um, I'm sorry that we spent so much time on social media that we yeah. didn't really get to dive into this. Cause I think this is an interesting topic and I think that people would be entertained by us disagreeing on this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, we'll try and pick it up there next week. I'm going to make a note right now. I'm going to write immigration on my notepad. All right. We have okay. the first note of the week That'll, for yeah. next week. <laughs> that, so we will, we will try and start there. All right. We'll start from the top and work our way. Unless down. something really interesting happens. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Ukraine flying a drone into Moscow or something <laughs> that we also didn't get to address. Yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, we'll be back next week. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Spend your time on that social media, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Promoting us, of course. Absolutely. Because that's what... That's what we want. Promoting us positively. Positively. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then we won't get as many clicks. Oh, well, yeah. it's <laughs> uh, a vicious cycle. <laughs> it is. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, you can subscribe uh, in those places, like and share. Um, tell your friends. We like word of mouth. Absolutely. You know, actually uh, interact with a real person yeah. and tell them how great our podcast is. Absolutely. And where they can find it. Yep. And you can always email me if you have questions, concerns, comments, disagreements, criticisms, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm at Michael at the Liberty Mike dot com. And uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm -hmm.